Hey everybody, it's January 6th at 9.30 p.m. I wanted to talk about natural gas. And uh, what I've got here is a screen that shows yesterday's disproportionately large trades. Um, January the 5th, I've got them shown for UNG Boil and Cold. And there's only one thing showing, and that is this 1 million share trade on UNG, which I tweeted about. And <clears throat> it ranked 82nd largest, which maybe doesn't sound that big, but for UNG, it's it's relatively big. And um, well, I guess any top 100 trade is relatively big. So this registers, it's only about 8x average size. This is a, a function of there not being as much action in UNG as many other stocks. Um, and it last traded this large back on September 12th. And I also want to talk about this trade that came in today, Boyle, 11.49 a.m., 13th ranked, uh, largest in a couple of weeks, about 6x, 500k here. But before I talk about any of those, I wanted to show a chart of UNG. This is for those people who maybe aren't familiar with how uh, this fund is structured, but it's um, comprised of natural gas futures. And <clears throat> as a result of the way that it's constructed, it suffers from contango. And so if you don't know what contango is, you can Google it, but it's uh, effectively it means decay. So holding this fund for any length of time is ultimately a losing proposition. You can see it's had uh, so much decay that at some point it was worth about $2,000, and today it's worth eleven eighty nine. So it's not something you want to just hold on to for, you know, uh, a couple days, a week. I don't know. I don't know exactly how much time is too long, but what you don't want to do is get in a position and get bagged and think you can hold out for, you know, weeks and months and eventually get back. I mean, you might, but you're, you're swimming upstream. It's, it's a difficult proposition. So this is uh, similar to some other leveraged ETFs where they're not meant to be held for long periods of time. So with that in mind, I wanted to show how, how many 1 million share plus trades we've seen in the last few years. This is a, a chart of 2018 to today. Uh, you can see we've got a few up here that came in before pop, so it looks like some <clears throat> some degree of accumulation here. Lots of 1 million share trades, and they took it up. We had a big spike, and then a little bit of selling on the way down, and this one here was probably short covering. It meandered a bit, and then it continued on downward. Um, I don't know if these are shorts or short covers that just came in a little bit early, um, but eventually it bottoms out. Come up here, and again, we see the two 1 million share trades. These are sweeps right at this little peak. Gas comes back down. We see a bunch more here as they prepare to send it back up. And then we saw this one here from over the summer, right at the, <clears throat> the peak, or near the peak in August. And they were selling into the strength of this rally. And I'll show you a chart how it didn't immediately turn, and that's one of the points I wanted to discuss. Um, but it did turn eventually. Um, and as I alluded to in my tweet earlier, these things sometimes take time. Then we got this big decline, and yesterday we got this 1 million share trade here, which I thought might be a good signal to suggest that the worst of this decline is over. Um, it's unclear yet if that is true, but that was my hope, because these 1 million share trades are kind of a magic number for UNG. A lot of times you'll see these exactly 1 million share trades um one million one million sometimes they go a little more but one million one million one million uh i don't know why this is but it's a pattern i have just noticed over time so uh yesterday's wasn't exactly a million it was a little bit more it was 1.023 million <clears throat> but regardless that one million share threshold is is kind of a signal to pay attention for for me anyway for ung um if we go and look a little bit closer in, uh, this is 2022, and we can see there were three of them here near the slow. It rallied all spring, declined, had another big rally in the summer. We got a big trade up here near the top, and then we've got another one here at what I hope is some kind of a bottom or nearing a bottom. Uh, we won't know right away necessarily, but it's a good sign. <clears throat> Because these, just like with any other stock, disproportionately large trades tend to arrive at or near highs and lows, tops and bottoms, turning points, pivots, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> That's where the big players come in with the biggest trades. Um, 
So this suggests to me there's a good chance that we're at or nearing an important low. If we zoom in though to the summer, this is what I this is what I keep thinking of. Um, if you look back here, we had this big rally in July that went down from went from 20 all the way up to uh, 34 something, 35, <clears throat> and it happened in the span of a month and a half or so. It was quite a sharp rally. Um, but when those large trades arrived, and I remember tweeting about this, um, it took what seemed like forever for this to finally resolve back downward. And I remember getting a little bit of friction about this because I think a lot of people, and sometimes even myself, expect that when you see a really large trade at a peak or a trough, that, that if you don't get that immediate price reversal, or if price continues in the same direction, it might be mistaken for a buy when it's a sell or a sell when it's a buy. To me, this looked very much like selling into strength. We have three large trades here that appeared on three consecutive days. We had 500K, and then we had a million, <clears throat> and then we had 972K. And price was not advancing further here, which just continued to suggest to me that this was selling. And I thought at the time it would just roll over somewhere here in mid to late August. And instead what happened is it shot back up. And it really kind of messed me up. I think a lot of people were frustrated with this too, understandably, because you have three or four days here of what appears to be uh, distribution. And then you get this other leg up here. And I think this this fooled a lot of people, it frustrated a lot of people. I saw the same thing happen in TLT over the summer. You get these big trades and then it just flattens out. And then you get this spike and then a quick reversal back, more grinding, and eventually it just finally tails off and, and begins resolving back downward. Um, so the reason I bring this up is because I'm I'm thinking about this in the context of the trades that we got yesterday, that maybe in reverse, we're somewhere around here. And that we might see some flatness for a while, and then maybe another spike down and a reversal back and some more flatness, and then uh, the resumption or the, the, the next leg up. <clears throat> There's no way to know this, of course. And these things don't project targets, they don't project timing, they just show institutional positioning and try and give you a sense of what's happening under the hood. So, if we look at today, you can see this is the last, this is since December 1st. We had this move down, we got a little short rally here for a few days or a week. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then the resumption of the selling. When this arrived here, this was, I think, five, yeah, this was 500K uh, sometime in late December. It, I, I was initially hopeful that it maybe was the beginnings of a low, but it came at a weird spot. It came after it bounced up, and it came at the end of the day, and it, it looked a little bit ominous. And it turned out to be, and selling resumed and kept on going down. So this was somebody, <clears throat> I presume, just shorting again after this downtrend had already been well established. But then we get this one million share here. And um, if we look at it more closely, it arrived at the end of the day after hours at five something in the afternoon. And <clears throat> it kind of arrived at a, in a strange spot. Generally when, when they close on the low and you see a big trade like that, that's when I feel more comfortable that they're certainly buying. And I think they probably still were buying here. But the nature of this pattern suggests that maybe it could go down again, and it ended up doing that. So it was a little disappointing when it opened down another 3 or 4% this morning, um, casting doubt on whether or not this was a buy or a sell, or whether or not it was a buy, I should say. <clears throat> I still don't think that it makes any sense at all for this to be selling after we've traded so far um, I mean, gas futures have fallen since July from 10 something into the threes. It's just this colossal decline and, and it, it could be shorting. Uh, it might just be covering, but it doesn't, it, 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 it's either buying or covering most likely at this juncture. So <clears throat> it occurred to me that maybe this was covering and I remember responding to a tweet saying something like the nature of the next bounce will suggest to us whether or not it was buying or covering and usually if a weak bounce follows and then we get a new low it's more indicative of covering and if we get a, a nice spike and some kind of sustained rally that stays above the level the print arrived at then that more suggests that it's buying 
and we didn't get either of those we just got another gap down and more selling so this may have just been covering um, and if it was that's still a good sign because they tend to cover near the lows and then there's usually another uh, short leg down before they start buying um, and that may have happened today there are no prints down here to suggest that and maybe this was buying just a little bit too soon or a little early um, and that's also not terribly unusual because institutions with deep pockets are sometimes operating on I would say often anyway operating on larger time frames so they're not it's not necessarily that big of a deal to take just a little bit of heat on a position like this so a variable could have been buying uh, and what we did see is that after this little pre-market uh, overnight move down in futures uh, <clears throat> it did come back up to the level at which the trade arrived and this is an encouraging sign that it rebounded back up to this level quickly rather than just continuing down all day and it kind of bounced around it did dip a little bit here and it came back up and recovered and I think at the end of it all it closed just a little bit below this yeah it closed 1189 just a little bit below the level of the print which is not ideal but it's not terribly concerning at this point anyway <clears throat> but then boil this was this one kind of <sighs> this was unexpected we got this morning bounce here um, and then boil prints near the high of the day and price reacted negatively and then it rebounded and went back up above and it kind of oscillated here it was a, a weird spot I, I would have expected if that if they are going to put money into leveraged ETFs that it it it, it yield more of a return than what this yielded so this almost looks to me like um, they bought a little bit down here and they sold it <clears throat> a few hours later or alternatively it could have been a short uh, I think the assumption is that when boil is traded it's always buying um, they could short these ETFs just as easily um, same with cold same with any inverse ETF or any leverage ETF you just never know but I didn't like the way this looked and I still don't um, so it's it's kind of in an unclear spot for me I was encouraged by this yesterday I was discouraged that it continued down but encouraged that it came back up a little this boil you never know it, it could be buying at this point it, it, it's hard to say I, I would hope that if it was we would see a gap up on Sunday night and the thing with natural gas is that it seems like the biggest moves tend to come on Sunday nights I don't know why this is but they'll close it at a higher low and then they'll gap it up or down 10 or 12 percent sometimes um it's it's really really wild and they they i mean it gas moves plenty during the week too but it seems like those sunday moves are the most vicious and that's when they trap people so <clears throat> if they wanted to if they were buying uh if this was a buy here in boil and if this was a buy in ung then i can see why they would want to keep it down through the end of the week and then gap it up on sunday to wherever another 10 percent up um, likewise I can see that um, if they were just covering and, and they were going to take it back down again keep it here accumulate more short positions I don't know it doesn't make sense to cover and then make another short position here so this would have had to have been a short if they wanted to really substantively move this down from here and it you know anything's possible it just doesn't seem plausible to me I think this is either covering or buying I think this this is somewhat of a mystery I don't quite know how this fits in yet and maybe it'll make more sense come Monday <clears throat> but anyway that's where we are with UNG so um, I've taken a few shots at this um, with mixed results it's it's been a somewhat frustrating <laughs> activity trying to take long positions against this really steep decline um, and I've, I've gotten in a, a few times and gotten out quickly um, I do have a, a position right now a small position in boil and um, but it's not something that I entered when I saw this it's something that I entered when I saw this and then I had a little bit of a surprise waiting for me this morning when it when it continued on down so uh, I'm a little bit underwater here but <clears throat> I'm not gonna get married to this thing it's not something that if, if um, price continues down that I want to be holding for a long period of time it'll be very very difficult to to uh, 
get back uh, as this thing decays. And you never know how long they're going to keep it down. Um, they might drop it down and stay flat for some period of time, just like they did here. So if we're at this point here in reverse, this, this first million share trade that arrived in mid-August, if it follows a similar pattern, which is a big if, you never know, then we might just be flat here for the next three or four days. We might get another spike down and then come back and be flat for four or five more days. It's, it's you, you just don't know. Um, so uh, anyway, this is where we are. I, I, I wanted to make this video to show that just because this trade arrived doesn't mean that we should expect an immediate move. Uh, especially with the nature of the decline. It's very steep. It's been going for a little while now. So the longer the move that preceded the print, the, the longer it might take for the reversal to appear. So it's, I want to be careful not to jump to conclusions that just because price broke down from here that this must be a sell. Maybe. I, it doesn't make as much sense to me in the bigger picture that this be a sell, but you just never know. Um, I just wanted to make sure that everyone knows that this could take time. There are no guarantees that this is going to reverse and that, uh, or that if it does, it'll happen in some period of time. So, uh, best advice I would say is to, um, just watch it closely. Don't, if you're in it, don't, um, you know, just be mindful of how natural gas is so volatile and unpredictable and be aware again of how contango affects your, uh, ability to stay solvent in a long-term position. So it's very difficult when you are uh, fighting against decay that happens uh, implicitly within the fund itself. So uh, the last thing I had to show was the cold chart for the last couple of days. This it's a little bit concerning that cold has been on. You know, obviously this is the inverse ETF and it's been moving up. Uh, fast as um, as gas has been falling and I haven't seen anything here to suggest there's a big uh, sell in cold we've seen a few prints you know okay size but nothing nothing is as large as this boil print certainly nothing as large as this UNG print so <clears throat> I haven't yet seen evidence in cold to suggest that the move is over I think this tells us we're close I don't know how close um, I think this is, like I said, a kind of a mystery to me. I don't quite know what to make of this yet. Um, but there's nothing in cold that, that is saying anything. And there doesn't have to be, but often you'll see these large prints, particularly after a big move like we've had in boiling cold and UNG. Um, if I were to see a big, you know, uh, top 10 or top 20 ranked cold print appear at one of these peaks, <clears throat> that would really get my attention and suggest to me that they're wrapping things up so it's another thing to watch for um i watch cold and boil but i think that they're going to first bottom by by um accumulating the underlying accumulating ung shares so this may have been the beginning of that um and then i think just based on past experience they get their position in the underlying and then when they're ready to really make a big strong move that's when you start to see the leverage etfs trade largely um, <clears throat> they're not going to hold them any longer than they need to just like we shouldn't so these guys tend to trade um, largely um, before and after large moves so um, this suggests maybe a large move is coming nothing in cold to me does um, I don't know my my conclusion from all this as I've been talking for nearly 20 minutes now is that I think it's I think it's the process has begun. Um, it's there are a lot of unknowns. I think the process has begun though. So um, if I was short, I wouldn't want to be short anymore. Um, I would I would get out of that or or protect it in some way or hedge it or whatever. I, I think that most of the downside is probably behind us. Um, maybe all of it. We'll see. So uh, well anyway, that's all I had and um thanks for listening if you have questions uh dms are open on twitter or just uh send me an email at info at volume thanks guys